if someone's avoidant in relationships, it usually is a deep-rooted fear of intimacy and feeling safe, being intimate with somebody. It's the fear of rejection, mm. the fear of abandonment, and mm. that's the same with the anxious side as well. So what we would do, we would regress that person back to several scenes in their childhood mm -hmm. to find out the root cause. Uh, anyone in authority, our peers, our family have the biggest influence over us. So when we're younger, we often internalize beliefs based on what our parents say, what the teachers say, what society say, what our peers say. We internalize it a certain way and we usually internalize other people's behavior as oh, I'm not good enough to stay around. Mm. And then through our beliefs, that becomes our perception and we start to think, well, if our mum and dad can do it, then our partners could do it, our friends could do it, our work colleagues could do it. So we go through life with a very guarded um, attitude and then we find ourselves like being attracted to the same type of person as our parents, as our ex-partner, um, as our experience because the mind loves what is familiar. Welcome to this new episode and today I am here with Emma, the heart healer. How are you, Emma? I'm really well. Thank you, Luca. Thanks for having me. That's lovely. So Emma is a specialized in helping people improve and heal their relationships. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I'd like to ask you, what is your story in life? When I was younger, um, like many of us, um, I grew up in a household that was both loving but also quite abusive. Mm. So as I was growing up, um, my confidence was very low, my self-esteem was very low. And uh, I noticed that I started to, as I got older, I started to attract a similar type of person, a similar type of man to my dad. And I mean, I'm, now I'm older, I absolutely love my father, you know, I absolutely forgive him. He's a great man in so many ways. But when I was growing up, he was very, very strict with me. So I found myself attracting the same type of guys over and over and over and over again. And it was like, it was tw about 25 years of heartbreaking experience from the age of 19 till I was 35. So, and then one day, um, about 10 years ago, I, I said to myself, what is the common denominator in all these relationships? Because all my friends were saying, you're cursed, what's wrong? Why can't you get yourself a partner and stay in one in a relationship? I was like, oh, it must be me. And then something so obvious, but so far out of my awareness, I thought I am the common denominator in all of these relationships. And it was just like a light bulb moment something so obvious but so far away from my awareness and uh, yeah and this is when I went on a self-development journey um, 11 years ago now so I healed myself I did lots of uh, seminars one-to-one -one sessions uh, traveling diff with different coaches and healers and, and therapists and this went on for quite a few years and I found the more I worked on myself, the more I cl cleared my subconscious patterns, mm -hmm. cleansed my energy of any abuse from the past, mm -hmm. I found that the guys that I started to date were more loving, more present and then I got really passionate about helping people do the same because I lived a really unhealthy lifestyle, I was masking the abuse with drugs and alcohol mm. and a terrible party lifestyle. It was lots of fun at the time, but I didn't realize I was doing myself a really big disservice by doing this. But it was a coping mechanism. It was something that was just helping me get through life, basically. I didn't know what was wrong with me. Um, yeah, and then as I started doing more self-development work, I, I stopped going out, I stopped drinking, I stopped taking drugs, and all I wanted to do was show people that there's help out there 
if you're stuck in a rut like I was, if you're in, uh, if you're having really bad luck in relationships, if you're taking drugs, using drugs as a coping mechanism, this is not the way forward. And in society, unfortunately, as a whole, um, we it's kind of the go-to therapy, you know, going to the pub. I used to think nothing of going to the pub, having a drink, mm -hmm. you know, and just like drink, keeping calm and carrying on is just just didn't work for me and I know a lot of people that it didn't work for too so yeah I'm really passionate about helping people move from those experiences into a better life. What you say happy. I'm sure resonates with lots of people out there you know it's uh, I mean it's uh, and there are at least two elements of what you're saying so one is psychological you talk about the, uh, the subconscious being able to you know understand yourself from a psychological perspective yeah. but also you say that you had to clear away or energetically in order to then develop into this more uh, sort of grounded and wholesome individual yeah that then was able to attract uh, similar awesome individuals, right, for a relationship, is it, that right? It wasn't just that I started to attract a, because uh, we attract our own vibration. So if we're coming from the energy of lack and fear and anger and frustration, then of course we're going to attract the same type of person over and over again. But what I noticed as I healed my relationship patterns and I healed myself, became whole, my business um, just got more profitable, more successful. I had more clients, I had more people referring me. And then I started another business and another business. And then about five, six years ago, I got into therapy, ther the therapy business. So, and now I'm helping others. So it's just, you know, it's just been an amazing journey. And I'm actually really thankful for my dad for, for doing, um, for bringing me up like he did really, because he was my biggest teacher. And wow. I thank him for that. And that's really the ultimate, you know, to really be able to embrace your parents uh, and uh, be very loving from the heart and forgiving them, you know, it's yeah. like it's so difficult to do it really thoroughly, you know. Yeah. I'm still kind of um, coping a little bit with uh, uh, sort of the aftermath of the relationship with my father. I mean, we are in touch, of course, we talk nicely, etc. But um, I, you know, the patriarchy, so to speak, or the, the father figure that is very strict and discipli disciplinarian. Mm. I mean, it's something that, uh, you know, I experience myself. Mm. And, uh, I do have a theory on that, Luca, mm -hmm. why this happened the way it did. Um, my dad is like 75. Mm. His dad was in the war. Mm. So when his dad came back from the war, he had a lot of war trauma mm. and back then, men never used to talk about their feelings, they used to shove everything down. So all this frustration, all this trauma, all this anger was transferred onto my dad. And then my dad transferred it onto us. Yeah. So I, I definitely think there's a lot of um, ancestral trauma to do with the war, World War II. For sure, for sure. I, I totally agree, you know. And uh, I mean, my, my grandfather always, he was imprisoned in, uh, in northern Germany for 10 months at the end of the war, can you imagine, in a labor camp. Mm -hmm. And then he made it all the way back on foot and like it took him like two weeks to go back to Italy. And he never talked about the war, not even once. Like it didn't exist, mm -hmm. you know. It was, uh, but then sometimes, you know, sometimes I think also people might damage children unconsciously. No, it's not that they, they don't love them, just that if they're not present, they had a tough day or something like that, maybe they take it out on the kids in an unconscious way. For right? sure. I mean, we live what we learn, Luca. So if, her, if our fathers were taught the way that they, their fathers loved them, which was get this done, do this, get up every morning, work hard, <clears throat> don't talk about your feelings, um, it's, it, don't be a sissy, don't be a girl, all these kind of words. Mm -hmm. over, over time, um, a guy and a woman as well push their feelings down and then it becomes a trauma and this is when the mind starts to overthink, act out, get paranoid, all of these things and because we live what we learn, if that's all we've been shown, that's what we'll pass down onto others unless we find the root cause, we clear the pattern and also release the energetic uh, ancestral trauma from the past. So even though it's been passed down to us, it's ours to change. And this is what I'm really passionate about. Yes, to empower people to actually take charge of uh, their experiences. Right? Yeah. 
yeah, to take absolutely. responsibility, which is responsibility. So it's just taking responsibility. Yes, because like a, acting out like a victim is not going to help you. No. I mean, might get some compassion from people, but other than that, you're going to still stay stuck like you were before, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, uh, let's go into the, um, some more details. So let's say that I'm having a session with you because uh, I feel uh, I'm really struggling with the relationships. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does it work from a practical perspective? There's some talking therapy that you do. Is there a, mm -hmm. some sort of like energetic healing or how do you, what's your approach? Well, first it depends on the person. So I like to have a 45 minute conversation with anybody before I book anything with them because it might not be a good fit for them and uh, it might not be a good fit for me as well. So I start off asking people questions. So what was their family life like? What have they tried before? What's their biggest challenge? Where do they see the South in three months time? And then I assess to see if they're a good fit for the work. And then what happens in the session is that they're regressed into their subconscious mind to the root cause and reason for why we have the certain patterns that we have. So say, for instance, somebody was totally avoidant in relationships. Um, if someone's avoidant in relationships, it usually is a deep-rooted fear of intimacy and feeling safe being intimate with somebody it's the fear of rejection mm. the fear of abandonment and mm. that's the same with the anxious side as well so what we would do we would regress that person back to several scenes in their childhood mm -hmm. to find out the root cause because when we're about eight nine ten eleven these ages our beliefs are formed not just by one thing it's formed by something our mum said, our dad said, our teacher, what our teacher said. Anyone in authority or uh, anyone in authority, our peers, our family have the biggest influence over us. So when we're younger, we often internalize beliefs based on what our parents say, what the teachers say, what society say, what our peers say. We internalize it a certain way and we usually internalize other people's behavior as oh, I'm not good enough to stay around. Mm. I'm not good enough to stay around. Say the, the mum or the dad was working a lot and the child was left at home a lot. You may internalise that as, I'm not good enough to stay around, I'm not good enough to be around, nobody loves me, I'm unlovable. And we grow up with these thoughts, we grow up with these beliefs. And then through our beliefs, that becomes our perception and we start to think, well, if our mum and dad can do it, then our partners could do it, our friends could do it, our work colleagues could do it. So we go through life with a very guarded um, attitude and then we find ourselves like being attracted to the same type of person as our parents, as our ex-partner, um, as our experience because the mind loves what is familiar sure. and we reject anything that's not familiar. So we're subconsciously attracted to people, places, situations and things that mirror our self-worth and our beliefs based on our experience when we were children. So then we find ourselves in relationships that we're like, oh my God, why do I keep attracting this same person? Or over and over again, mm -hmm. because it's like a different, like a different uh, body, but the same type of person. Yes. But it's usually because it's the feeling of, feeling like we're at home subconsciously so if we've been brought up with a certain family dynamic, then we're going to be subconsciously attracted to that. But also we stay there longer because it feels normal. So we basically look at the root causes of why this pattern happens. And because the subconscious mind is the child brain, we go into the child brain and we reframe those old beliefs yes. into more powerful, uh, powering, empowering, loving, more confident beliefs. So people can have better relationships. Awesome. And they feel good in the sound, they have more self-love and compassion cool. to others. There is an interesting theory that uh, says uh, uh, victims of trauma uh, seek to live the same trauma over and over and over again. Oh. And every time they sort of, you know, if they had an abusive father and they have an abusive boyfriend and then another abusive boyfriend and another abusive boyfriend, they go through the same cycle mm -hmm. in order to make sense of it. And hopefully with more awareness and maturity, they are able to realize that 
and then escape from this pattern. Yeah. What do you think of this theory? It's, I totally believe that and it happens a lot. So I can give you an example, a client called David, so I've changed his name out of co client confidentiality. But when David was younger, he lived with his mum and he loved his mum and he loved his brothers and he loved his school. But then one day he was caught glue sniffing and the teacher expelled him. So he had to leave his school and then his, his father, who had a stepmother, um, he was told he had to go and live with, with him a hundred mile away mm. from where he lived. So just like being ripped from that family home, mm. being taken to uh, the dad's place. He was very hard working, so he was hardly at home. He was left at, at home a lot. He, was, um, he hated his school, he got into trouble. He felt like his mum abandoned him. So the first relationship he got into, after about three months, she cheated on him. So that mm. broke up. The next relationship, seven relationships, Luca, seven relationships, because based on this one situation, and it was several scenes within that situation that we worked on, but based on this one situation, he had beliefs that were, uh, I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, um, my mum abandons me, um, nobody wants me, everybody leaves me. So he attracted seven women that actually cheated on him. And did basically what the mother did in his, uh, in his experience. Of yes. course, maybe it wasn't true. Of course, but when we were adults, yes. yeah. His, so basically his experience of abandonment with, from the mother yeah. was lived through these partners over and over. And then he was able to realize it, would you? Is it like yes, a, is yes. Right? So he got into a relationship and he was like, oh, I keep looking at my phone every five minutes to see if she's messaged me. Oh, if she doesn't message me after an hour, <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking she's having an affair. Mm. There's something wrong with me. I mean, David was a successful businessman. You know, he was successful in everything. But he was sabotaging these relationships mm. based on his past experiences. And the root cause, when we healed that root cause, when we reframed those old beliefs, we went into his child mind, we reframed it, we upgraded his child mind into his adult mind, we integrated the inner child, all with rapid transformational therapy. And now he's with this lady, he says he's not checking his phone, he's not <laughs> like, he's not like, she's not coming back from work with her work clothes on about an hour too late, and him thinking instantly she's having an affair at work, <laughs> oh and this God. is what it was like, it was driving him crazy. And I think just knowing that you have a problem in a certain area of your life, is you're halfway there to resolving it. Yes. And it just takes a couple of hours of work to, to let that go, because that must be mental torture. But yeah, I believe that it, it all comes from our, our subconscious mind is running the show. Mm -hmm. This is what I believe, what I've learned over the years. Totally. And once we upgrade that child mind into the new world that, and the adult self, then we just let go of all that, that trauma and those beliefs and those feelings and those memories that we have inherited from our childhood. You know, I 100% believe that what you're saying is true uh, from a theoretical perspective, definitely. Mm -hmm. Practically speaking, uh, sometimes I see it in my own life or other friends' lives, even when people realize the problem, Mm -hmm. and uh, they try to move away from it. Maybe they stick to the new regime for a little while, but then mm. something happens in life and then default back mm. into the old pattern again. Mm -hmm. So how can uh, somebody that uh, realize there is uh, sort of this pattern happening because of childhood trauma or relationship with parents, uh, you know, how can they actually embed this uh, new belief of uh, them being worthy and uh, powerful and wholesome people. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, when people do inner work on their subconscious and they, they shine the light on the pattern, it, it gives you that bird's eye view, that separation, mm. that that's not me anymore, and the pattern can be broken. But what I do with my clients is that I give them a hypnosis recording with all their words and phrases, so everything that they they need to feel, what they need to think, what they want to call into their life, I put into um, a hypnosis recording that mm -hmm. they listen to for 30 days, twice a day. So the mind learns by repetition. And the more we say beautiful words and phrases to ourselves, like I'm, I'm good enough, I'm enough, I'm enough to stay around, all of these things, once we 
create after the 30 day recording then mm. the mind is is reprogrammed into okay. thinking as another way a new way um, and then what can happen over a while say a couple of weeks go by and they have a situation in life that triggers the old pattern mm. sometimes they look inside and go oh actually I would have acted like this but I'm not like that anymore but if there is still a little bit more left they can just go back to their recording for a few days okay. to reprogram. So just go back to the practice, mm. basically. But it's it's just more work. I mean, if if somebody's getting really triggered and they're, they're doing like destructive behavior, then they just need more work on it, that's all. And it's layered. The subconscious um, absorbs 11 million pieces of information per second. So, you know, one session is not going to do it. A couple of sessions is needed to really just peel back those layers and to get to the, because it's so vast and deep, our subconscious, to get to all of the root causes, because it's rarely just one, two or three. Sure, so sure, it's sure. an ongoing process. And I think as we go through life, as we meet new people, as our potential expands, then of course we're going to get triggered. The old pattern might come back in a little bit and it's like, oh, I see you, I see you're there. Just a little bit more work to do on that. Mm -hmm. and just go back to the recording so yeah yeah because there is some sort of rebirth happening from uh, you know when you leave your old pattern your old self your old belief system uh, yeah. you know that's maybe so embedded from childhood and yeah. you see for instance in my case maybe i can see women in a certain way of men in authority figures in a certain way and yeah. that's the way i am familiar with even when i see that actually that is not true it's uh, mm. maybe this, this this you know this projection mm. comes from from trauma or comes yeah. from you know something that doesn't serve me then i can move into the new direction and re-evalue re everything that i know about you know men in authority figures for instance yeah. and then relate to them better but then if there's a problem a very strong man maybe gives me some pushback or something then i can go back into the practice again relieve this uh, trauma with my father and empower myself again and try one more time yes. right? so it's practice practice yeah. practice and then maybe two three four years later or maybe even six months if you're lucky then uh, you are the new self you feel the new self you're totally embodied and life yeah. is better right yeah of course yeah and i think it's really important as we're doing this work and we're going out with a new perspective um is if we do have little setbacks to be compassionate with yourself because if it's a really strong pattern from childhood and it's been with you your whole life, it's not going to be resolved overnight. And it's very important to be compassionate. So if you did find yourself in that situation where you you felt the energy oh, and you're like, oh, I can feel this pattern coming. But even just recognizing it in that moment, because a lot of people um, can be unconscious with this and they go straight into the pattern. So if even if you're able to recognize it and take a step back in that moment, that is amazing self-control. But say if you did like jump in and you, I don't know, acted out of um, just what you're feeling, then it's just to be compassionate to that, that, that younger version of you because that's where it's coming from. And it's just how, it's like, our beliefs and our perceptions and our um, our actions are usually coming from the child mind. So it's like, how how could we talk to a ten year old who's getting angry with the authority th figures because they're telling them that you know they can't have their visa or whatever? Of course, that child's going to be upset. Wants to stay in this beautiful <laughs> island, and it's like, well, let's talk. Let's talk to it. How can we talk to it? It's okay, darling. We're gonna we're gonna sort this out. It'll be fine. Wow. There's always a way out. That's you not know, really like the way you're so reassuring and, oh. and warm about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know, it makes perfect sense, yeah? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I like now to ask you about Copangan, you know, mm -hmm. because of course mm -hmm. there are many beautiful places in the world that someone like you could go travel and live in. Yeah. Uh, what is so special about Copangan and what are your plans here? Oh, what is so special about Copangan? Oh, wow. I mean, there's no place like it on this earth. I've done a lot of traveling in my life and I've traveled the world. And I found that when I visited Koh Phangan back in 2013, I had this feeling about it. It gave me so much um, like love and high energy. And when I left like two weeks later, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Every time I left this place, it was like leaving 
a partner, you know, somebody that I love. I thought about them every single day. And I used to say things like, oh, I'll never go back to the same place every year. I think that's so boring. And then I found myself coming back to Koh Phangan for like two weeks, extending for a month, uh, coming for a month, extending for three, coming for three months, extending for six, and now I just live here. So, I mean, I just absolutely love the place. The people are so friendly. The vibe is is so high. Um, nothing negative seems to stick around for long. And just be careful on the roads, but if you're comfortable with the roads, the, the roads are like the veins of the island. And to just like, mm. to surf the waves of these roads, you know, okay. obviously with a helmet. Um, but yeah, and, and just to be able to, if you're feeling a bit down or a little bit upset over something, take yourself to the ocean, you know. Mm. The people are smiley, people smile at you, then as you smile at somebody, they, they'll smile at somebody else and it'll just go around. And it's just, I feel safe here. Um, I absolutely love it, it's, mm -hmm. it's my home now. Mm -hmm. So my plans are to stay here as long as possible. This mm -hmm. is my, my base, my home. I have a company here. I have a house um, and yeah, to just keep serving the community and, and enjoying being here, have a happy life and yeah, just be happy. Okay, and okay, okay. So of course, uh, a component of uh, your work is online yes. and some of it is on the island, it's is that in right? person, yeah. So that's awesome. So if anybody, you know, has some problems with relationships, obviously, and more, because again, this technique that you're using, um, rapid, can, transformation, yeah. rapid transformational therapy can be used uh, across uh, oh, yeah. all aspects of personality, mm, right, pretty yeah. much. So that's very powerful. And also I like to offer people a free call as well to see if it's a good fit for them or not because it's not for everybody. So if anybody wanted to just um, contact me for that, yeah, I would, I would love to help them. That's awesome. So we'll put uh, some links in the, in the description. Yeah. But, you know, Emma, thank you very much for uh, your time today. You know, thank you so lovely much, meeting Luca. you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. having me. <laughs>